Hello and welcome to the 62nd episode of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and today is Friday, November 16th, 2012. I'm recording in sunny Florida in the United States of America. It's not sunny today, though. It's overcast. We've had no sun today, uh, so the lighting is not very great in here today. Um, I am Sock Bunny on pretty much everywhere on the web. I am on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, and Blip.tv as Sock Bunny. The blog is at SockBunnyKnitAndFit.blogspot.com. The email address is SockBunnyKnitAndFit at gmail.com. And my Etsy shop is SockBunnyStudios.etsy.com where you will find hand-dyed yarn and fiber. I do have podcast buttons for sale if you are interested. The, they are $2. Whoops. There we go. They're $2 and the um, Two dollars goes to help pay for postage, um, prizes, different things like that. Mostly postage. I'm trying to get to focus. Focus. Okay, it's not going to focus today. There, it's as good as it gets. So, if you would like one, you can send me two dollars via snail mail, regular mail, um, if you're comfortable with that, or you can send me two dollars. Uh, through PayPal, and the address for that is SockRabbit at gmail.com. Um, let's see. I did have a, my very first uh, shop update last Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and I plan on doing the same again this week. Last week's update, I had about a dozen things. I've got about double that this week. Um, so the, the next shop update will be Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and... Uh, if I show something today, I'm going to be showing later in the podcast the stuff that I've dyed. If I show something today that you like, you can contact me, and I will reserve it for you. I also do take custom orders. Um, we have a sponsor for the podcast uh, for the rest of the month of November. I was contacted by Allison, who is the owner of Simply Sock Yarn, and they are a store, an actual store, but they also sell online, and she told me, that I could pick any of her sock yarns that I wanted to. So she had, I think, 15 things, and I spent 20 minutes trying to figure out which one I wanted. And, of course, I was leaning towards some bright colors, but I decided, being the geeky podcaster that I am, that I would use a random number generator. So I used a random number generator, and it picked for me something I would not have picked. So I'm glad I did that. This is... Um, her post yarn in the Ambition colorway, it's a self-striping, and it's in colors I never would have picked. It's like a forest green and a silverish gray, and it's a Harry Potter themed colorway, and Rachel, my daughter, informed me that this is for Slytherin, which I have read Harry Potter, but I'm not obsessed with it the way she is, so <laughs> she was ashamed of me for not knowing that. So, um... She told me that I could pick, uh, Allison told me I could pick any yarn, and I told her I would show it on the podcast. So I told her as a thank you, I would show it uh, for the rest of the month of November, which I think will be this episode and two more episodes. And I did want to read, um, but first I want to show you the card. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. This is her post yarn striping sock. It's 75% superwash Coriadale, which I've never felt before. Um, it's really soft and squishy. It's 25% nylon, approximately 393 yards, 100 grams. And the colorway is called Ambition. And I want to read um, the little um, blurb that she has on the tag here. Uh, it says, Post Yarn is Simply Sock Yarns, si Simply Sock Yarn Company's exclusive line of sock yarn, specializing in hand-dyed stripes and specialty selections. Post Yarn pays homage to our 3,500-square-foot store and studio, which is housed in our newly restored 1940s post office. We hope to bring a bit of that era to you with each skein. So um, the, con the owner is Allison, and it is www.simplysockyarn.com. So thank you, Allison, very much. Uh, she said that um, a lady, I believe, who came to Midnight, told her about my podcast, so whoever you are, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. And um, she's actually one of two people this week that uh, people referred their friends to me. So I really, and I'll talk about the other one later, but I just think that's very, very sweet that you guys are do, out there doing that. So um, let's see. 
today's topics are charity, fitness, finished objects, works in progress, knit and crochet alongs, book review, spinning, look what I made, stash enhancement, tips and tricks, favorite things, and what I am watching and reading. I moved charity to the front because I wanted to first talk about uh, the charity drive that we just finished. It was August, September, October. We collected men's hats and scarves for a local homeless shelter that's in the next county over. It's about 45 minutes away from here. Uh, Rachel and I, my, Rachel's my 18-year-old daughter. We went over yesterday and dropped the hats off. We had 86 hats and scarves to drop off, drop off so give yourself a round of applause. Thank you guys very much for that. And they were very um, happy to receive them. And I will be doing another knit along next fall for them. Um, so we took the hats over to Pinella's Hope yesterday. And again, I know that Bishop Lynch would say thank you very much. Um, so thank you on his behalf. And um, that's it. If you uh, still want to knit hats, I know that Silly Fru from the Sassy Pants Knitter is uh, from the Sassy Pants Knitter podcast is still collecting hats through the end of November um, for the homeless. So if that interests you, contact her. Her Ravelry name is Silly Fru and her group is SPK on um, Ravelry. Okay, fitness. We have a fitness along going on and I was checking it out. I was looking at it this morning and we have 50 people participating right now in the fitness along thread, which I think is amazing. I am very, very, very happy to see that. So how does it work? What you do is any day that you work out at least 30 minutes consecutively, consecutively, you can post in the group that you worked out that day. Just do each day's workout in a separate um, post in the thread. At the beginning of the month, I will draw for the previous month, and you will win either your choice of a $5 giftable Ravelry pattern or yarn or fiber that I will dye for you in up to three colors. So, um, if that is something that interests you, if you're already working out, you might as well try to win something, right? And a lot of people have told me that having this thread has motivated them very much to work out and that's the whole purpose of this so I'm very very happy to hear that and um, I track my fitness on a website called spark people I'm not really active on there I mainly just use the website for tracking and I am sock bunny 66 on spark people um, this week I got Rachel to take a spinning class with me and she wasn't available on Monday when they have a beginner class so we went on Wednesday and we went to the intermediate class but um, I can fall over. Uh, we went to the intermediate class, which, um, you know, spinning is the type of thing where you can make it as hard or as easy as you want, sort of like knitting. And so uh, she actually did really well, and she wasn't in nearly as much pain as I was after I had my first spinning class. Of course, she's younger, so, you know. Uh, so we went to the intermediate class on Wednesday, and she really, really liked it. And when we finished, she was like, that's so much fun. I was like, I think it's fun, too. And we were like, we've never said that exercise was fun in our whole lives. <laughs> so we definitely are uh, becoming spinning addicts. Um, finished objects, I have none. Um, if you're a new viewer, what I normally do, I usually have about 5, 10, 15 <laughs> projects going simultaneously and I work on them um, as I feel like it because I think knitting should be fun and relaxing. Um, which it is. And so I am doing the um, crazy knit along that the Stockinette Zombies and the Fat Squirrel are co hosting, where you do something in November, December that's crazy for you. Well, crazy for me is being monogamous. I am not a monogamous knitter. I've never been a monogamous knitter, except maybe when I first was knitting my first dishcloth. After that, it was what anything goes. So, I uh, am only working on one project at a time. Now, I have one project that I keep in my purse, which is a pair of Steelers socks, and I'll show you those in a second. And I'm also working on a sweater for my older daughter, who is 20. I'm working on a sweater for her. Um, but I, before I knew about the crazy knit-along, I had signed up for a cowl swap knit-along with the Caffeinated Knitting Podcast. So I... Got the yarn in the mail for that, and yesterday I cast that on. So I want to show you that first. So I put the sweater on hold while I'm working on 
the part of the cowl that I'm going to mail to my swap partner. And um, then when I'm done, I'll pick the sweater back up. So the sweater that, I mean, the sweater, the cowl, cowl that we are doing for the knit along is one that is on Knitty. Knitty is a, um, Knitty.com is a website that has free knitting patterns. It's sort of like an online knitting magazine, but it's free. And so the pattern that we're doing is called the BFF cowl, which stands for Best Friends Forever. And I'm trying to find a good picture. Here's a picture um, of the two designers. They each designed half of a cowl. And then what you do with your best friend, your online best friend, is you knit half and send it to them. And they knit half and send it to you. And then you knit your half and then you um, put them together and you have a whole cowl. So let me find a different picture. This one down here shows how they are sharing their cowls, which is a really cute picture. So um, it is designed by um, Tiny Owl Knits and Isolde Teague. It's a really, really, really cute idea and a really cute pattern. The pattern, however, is kicking my behind. <laughs> I had a little bit of problems. Uh, it's one of those things where you just have to trust the pattern, and that's how it goes. Um, the first thing that was kicking my behind is... Um, the print when I printed it is extremely small. So after I had knit maybe about 20 rows, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I went and I copied and pasted it into a Word document and made it bigger. That way I can actually read it. The second thing is when I first started it, I started with um, metal needles and this yarn is pretty slippery. So I had to switch to bamboo, bamboo needles and I'm much, much happier. So um, if you're on Plurk or Instagram, last night I posted a picture where I had a drop stitch, and I know I dropped that stitch because I had the metal needles. So after I fixed that, I moved to the bamboo. So without further ado, let me show you what I have done. I, um, there's, you do the pattern repeat four times. So I've done it once and uh, one and a half times. And let me try to stretch it out where you can see it. You can see that it's like this um, flower. It looks like, um, it's called seed pod, the half that I'm doing. And the other half is called Cocoon. So you can see, I just think this is gorgeous. It'll look better once it's blocked. But it sort of reminds me of those Egyptian flowers that you see in a lot of Egyptian art. And um, like I said, it was really kicking my behind. Uh, but now that I have the right needles and the bigger font, I am doing much, much better. Um, so I can't work on the sweater until this is done. I can't work on anything else until this is done. When this is done and um, ready to be mailed, then I can pick the sweater back up. So I very, very much am enjoying this and I like this. Uh, I like the concept of this. Is that a mistake? Oh no, it's just some stitches that are loose. I think that'll even out in blocking. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't have a mistake in it. It's amazing how you can see things differently when you look at them on camera. So like I said, it'll look much better once it's blocked. So I will show this again next week. Finished, this half finished, and then I will mail it off. But I really, really like it. And whoever designed this flower motif is a genius. It's really clever how they did it. So I'm knitting it on um, size 7 bamboo clover needles. And they are just perfect. Um, perfect amount of slipperiness for this uh, particular project. This is why you need to have multiple kinds of needles in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Okay, so that again is the BFF cowl. It's free on Giddy.com or you can also find a link to it in my um, project notes on Ravelry. Okay, so I'm also working on Sarah's sweater. Sarah is my older daughter. She's 20. She lives in Rhode Island which is north in the United States. If you don't live in the United States, it's in the New England part of the United States, up like where New York State and New Jersey and all that where they just got hit by the hurricane a few weeks ago. So she asked me to knit her sweater, which is a big deal because she's always mocked my knitting, although now she's a knitter. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, so I, she chose off the Knit Picks website the Dania sweater. And you can see it's a cardigan, and then the sleeves are different. It's sort of preppy, university-looking. So um, 
I have actually made really good progress on this. I think I might have about 20 rows before I'm done. Um, okay, maybe, okay, I'll probably have about 35 rows before I'm done with the body of the sweater and I can start the sleeves. So I'm very impressed with the progress, which it's amazing how much progress you make when you only work on one thing. <laughs> I might be able to see the light, I mean, the logic between, behind this uh, way of knitting. So, I, let me see if I can get this looking decent here. It actually looks like a sweater, more like a sweater than it did last time. So, things are curling up because it's all stuck in it right now. So, okay, here we go. So, you can see this actually is looking like a sweater. Oh my gosh, seriously. So you can see this green yarn here is the waist yarn. So I've, I've separated the sleeves out. Here's half of it. The front. And of course, like I said, everything's curling. And th um, this is where I was last week when I showed it. So I did this much this week. So I'm very, very, very happy with how it's turning out. I'm knitting with this with Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. I'm using Knitter's Pride needles which are my favorite. I have officially declared Knitter's Pride. Their needles are my favorites. I want them in every size because I've, I've been using them for a few months and I love, love, love knitting them. Um, what else can I say about this? It's Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks. The colorway is Cobblestone Heather and then the three colors that will be on the sleeves are going to be black and I think this is, oh, I can't remember. I'll, I don't think it's in this week's show notes either. I think it's Dove Heather. Oh, wait, it's on the pattern. <laughs> um, yes, Dove Heather is the light. And then the darker one, the red is Garnet, Garnet Heather. And I've also decided that um, when I am done, I'm going to make her a little... Um, monster of some sort, probably a bot bite by Jenna from Retro Lemon Studios. Um, I'm going to make her a little robot to match. So that's the sweater. And I am not afraid of this sweater. If you are a long time viewer, you know, my first sweater, it took me over a year to make it because I was so scared of it. I would finish a part and I would put it away because I was so scared of it. And then I would knit a little bit, a little bit more and I'd put it away because I was so scared of it. And I am not scared of this sweater. So I think that is a huge leap for me um, in, you know, in my knitting career. And I um, have mentioned before that 2012, 2013 is going to be the year of the sweater for me. And I plan on knitting at least six sweaters in 2013. So which we will be talking about more coming up. Okay, so uh, last thing I have to show you in works in progress are the Steelers socks for Joe's, my husband Joe's Aunt Mary. She lives in Pittsburgh. She loves the Steelers. When she heard that I knit Joe's Steelers socks last year, she was jealous. So I dyed this. Um, this is some Knit Picks Bear yarn that I dyed in black and gold. It's a variegated. It's hard to tell what this sock is right now. <laughs> this is the cuff their anklets, and this is where the foot would be. So, pretty boring car knitting. Um, yesterday, when we drove over to, over to Pinellas County, I let Rachel drive. And since I could knit this and watch the road at the same time, because I can knit stocking out without, you know, having to stare at it, uh, I actually got, let's see, I think I was about right here yesterday, and I got all this done um, in the ride back and forth. So, um, not too much to say about that except I hate black and gold. There, I said it. I hate it. So this is a, an act of love. <laughs> I like to knit with bright colors. So the projects that I'm working right now are white, gray, and black and gold. I am not a happy camper. This is one of the reasons why I like to have multiple projects because that way if I'm working on gray, I can work on lime green for a little while and then go back to the gray and then work on the lime green for a little while. So this has been a slight bit of torture for me, but you know, that's okay. 
uh, let's see, upcoming knit alongs and crochet alongs. I, after I finish the sweater, I'm going to be casting on some um, color work mittens for the knit along that Tina from Knitting Blooms podcast is having, and that's running November 1st through December 31st. And then, excuse me, in December and January, I am co-hosting a variegated sock knit along with Denise from the Knitting Den, and um, variegated yarn. If you're not sure what that is, variegated yarn is yarn that has more than one color and it doesn't stripe. So that's the easiest way to say it. It could be um, kettle dyed but have two distinct colors or more. Um, and basically uh, variegated just means varied. Um, it's going to give you a not, a not a predictable pattern. It could cool. It could not cool. Uh, depending on the kind of yarn that you get. So what I have decided to do is um, if you use one of my yarns, and of course there's no pressure to do this, but if you use my yarn, you can enter your socks twice in the um, knit along. Um, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget that I said that. Uh, and when I do my dyeing this week, I have 40 skeins. All 40 of them are going to be variegated. Some of the ones I'm going to show you today are variegated. So if that interests you, if you want to knit along and you don't have any variegated yarn or if you want to get some of mine, but you can use any variegated yarn that you want to. Um, it does need to be um, socks and variegated yarn. It could be any pattern. It could be plain vanilla pattern. I'm going to be doing the um, Don't Cage Me In um, sock pattern by Heather from the Fiberista Files podcast. Let's see. I think that's it. Okay, I do have a book review. Um, I don't really review magazines very often, but this one I really am impressed with, and it started me thinking about something. Well, I had already sort of been thinking about it, but it really made me think more about something, so I want to talk about it. So it is Interweave Knits Holiday Gifts, I'm assuming 2012, and um, it's going to be on display until December 10th, 2012. And the thing that caught my eye is the cow that's on the cover. That's one of the things in here that I want to make. But you can see by my little yellow tabs here, there are several things in here that I want to make. And I'll just show you really quickly. I'm not going to spend forever on this. But here's a better picture of the cow. And then there's another picture of her wearing it, which is really cute. And so that's one of the things in here I want to make. There are many, many things in here I want to make, but the... These are my favorites. Uh, next is this awesome mitered square blanket. I love powder blue with red. I just think it's an awesome color combination because I think there's just such contrast. Next is, um, might be all sort of hard to tell, but this pillow right here, I absolutely love that. Um, I don't know if I would do it in the powder blue because I really like, like I said, I like brighter, bright, vibrant colors. So I don't know if I would do it in the blue, but this is something I definitely want to make. Next is another project where they have blue and red as a contrast. Let me open this up so you can see there. The, those uh, fingerless mitts, I really, really love them. They are so pretty these right here <laughs> hard to show it because it's on the crease of the page there we go I really 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 love I love the light blue with the red like I said so just very um, striking and next I love there's a very pretty cow and I just think that's gorgeous I love how they use the glass beads on there and of course, I probably would not do it in such a light color. And then lastly, um, these, ah, it's hard to show things sometimes, these socks. I like the fact that they have color work at the top and then lace at the bottom. I think those are very, very, very pretty. So, um, what did this magazine make me start thinking about? Um, there's a section in here, and I thought I had it marked, but maybe not. There's a section here where they talk about um, 
learn stretching yourself and learning new techniques. Now I'm already stretching myself uh, by being a monogamous knitter right now, and I think it's important as a person to stretch yourself occasionally um, uh, in all different areas of your life. It doesn't matter if it's emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever. You need to stretch yourself occasionally. I think it makes you a better person. So um, in this magazine, in one of the sections, they talk about Knitter's New Year's resolutions. And I had already decided that next year was going to be the year of the sweater. Well, this uh, has three different techniques that you can learn, and it teaches you how to do them. One of them in here, the first one is... Um, let me flip to the page where they actually start talking about it, is um, learning how to reinforce the steaks, and it even has pictures on how to do that. So you're going to do that for the hat, which is adorable, by the way. Um, so one of them is steaking, and if you don't know what steaking is, steaking is where you knit something circular, like say you want to knit a cardigan similar to this, you can knit it in the round, and then when you're done, you cut your knitting um, to put the button band in, or a zipper, or something like that. Um, and obviously it's not just used for sweaters because here they are using it for a hat. So it is used on different projects. Um, and in here they have you knit a little sample swatch swatch, and uh, steep that for practice so you're not using this gigantic sweater for your first steaking um, project. The next technique that you could learn from this magazine is mosaic knitting. I've done this one before and I really like it. And mosaic knitting looks complicated, but it's not. It's basically slipping stitches. But part of the trick to mosaic knitting is learning how to read a pattern for mosaic knitting, and they teach you how to do that. I was very impressed with that. And third, I don't know how to do this. So this, I think I want to learn how to do this soon, is double knitting. And double knitting basically means that, um, from what I understand, okay, I'll just read what it says. <laughs> that will help. Uh, what is double knitting? Double knitting creates two layers of fabric simultaneously one on, on one set of needles. Okay, double knitting creates two layers of fabric simultaneously on one set of needles. Two layers provide warmth for cozy bed socks or double protection for cell phone or laptop covers, oven mitts, and spectacle cases. So they do have you making uh, an eyeglass case in here. And they teach you how to do the cast on that you need to do and, and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really cool. So um, it made me start thinking even more about, okay, so I want to make six sweaters next year. What are some of my other goals? Um, so I've actually started, I, I keep a lot of notes in my cell phone, in uh, the notepad on there, and so I've started making some um, uh, notes as to some things I might want to do next year. Um, like I know I want to do some more uh, knitting patterns and release those. Uh, what else did I have on there? Oh, I want to take at least four knitting classes next year. It could be craftsy classes. Um, so that would be basically one each quarter. Um, it could be craftsy classes or, or real life classes or whatever. But um, again, my hand's doing something weird. Poopy. Sorry, it's distracting me. Um, it's, uh, I think, good again to stretch yourself. So I want to take at least four classes this year, knitting or crocheting or spinning or whatever, um, related to fiber. So those are some things that I've been thinking about. Um, so start thinking about your goals because I think I might um, be, uh, I think when we get to our thousand members, one of the things that you're going to need to answer in order to be entered into one of the drawings for prizes, because they're going to be multiple, um, is what are your uh, goals for 2013? And these are goals. They're not set in concrete. You're not, the police are not going to come to your house if you don't meet them next year or whatever. It's just brainstorming, really, to try to stretch yourself next year. So that's just what I was thinking about. Okay, spinning. Um, a few weeks ago, I showed some fiber that I bought at Fiber Inn in September. And it's a Merino Tessa Silk bait, uh, blend. And I love the color. And this is what it looks like before it's spun. I hate spinning it. It's the first thing I've ever spun that I hated. I mean, it's not that I just don't like it. I hate it. So I did spin some of it, and I'll tell you why I didn't like it. But this is what it looks like after. And it's really soft. It's not a softness issue. 
So here's before, here's after. The thing I don't like is it's very, very, very slippery and hard to control. And it actually hurt my wrist to spin it. Now, I did break my wrist when I was in, um, like, junior high, high school age. I broke my wrist. I do have issues with it sometimes. But this was so slippery, and it was making me so frustrated and so mad that I just was like, I'm not going to spin the rest of it. So I think what I'm going to do is take the rest of what I didn't spin and what I didn't cut off the the uh, bobbin and throw in the garbage because <laughs> I was that mad. Um, what is left of it, probably about half of it's left, and I will give it away uh, for a thousand member drawing. Because somebody likes Merino Tussa Silk Blend, right? Yes just not me. So I did do some other spinning to calm myself down. Um, I had dyed up some fiber in fluorescent colors, which this is fiber that, um, this is Falkland that I dyed with some dyes that I bought that actually glow under black light. And what I want to do is for my spinning instructors at the Y, I want to knit them each a little stuffed toy, probably not by Christmas because I don't know. Maybe by Christmas, but I doubt it. But whenever it gets done, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a Christmas present. But So here is some spinning. And I tried to make it as rustic as possible because that's what I like. And I think it's really cute how it turned out. Um, this is, I've dyed it most, it, there's a little bit of yellow, but I dyed it mostly orange and fuchsia pink. I didn't count the yardage yet, but I love this. Love it. Love, love, love. It's so much more fun to spin than the Telsa Silk. I just don't like it. Everybody's allowed to not like something, so that's my thing. So far, I've liked everything else that I've spun, so that's the only thing. Um, let's see. Okay, now I'm going to show you the stuff that I have dyed over the last couple of weeks. It's I'm going to go through it really fast, so don't lose hope. I do have a few things to talk about after, so just hang in there. Um, if this doesn't interest you, maybe go get a cup of tea while you're waiting <laughs> or fast forward or something like that. But I do want to show this big, I have a gigantic box of stuff here. I'm going to go through it really fast. If you see something that you like that you want to, me to reserve for you, just let me know. Otherwise, it's going to be in the shop Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Uh, first, this is some BFL. And I have two of almost all these things. So this is a, uh, the lighting is terrible because there's zero light coming from outside. And this is all overhead light. Um, and I apologize for that. But this is like a purplish and greenish, sort of like a smoky color. And I call this Purple Mountain Majesty. So there's two of this. It's Falkland. I have, um, oh wait, no, that was BFL. I lied. That was BFL. I also have two BFL here in a colorway that I'm calling Spicy Hot, which is actually more peachy, less orange that we're seeing here. So that's that. And then I have two BFL in a colorway that I'm calling Advent. It's pinks and purples. And again, the lighting in here is terrible. I really, really apologize for that. It's deeper than what you're seeing here. The purples are deeper. It's hard to show purple anyway. And then we have um, two BFLs in a brownish color that I am calling Brindle. And it's more deep brown than what you're seeing there. And then I have two Falkland. Oops, the tag's coming off of one of them. Hold on. I have two Falkland. And this colorway I am calling Golden Rule. It's like a mustardy golden color. I'll fix that tag. This is my favorite one out of all the fibers that I did. It's a green, and it, I'm calling it Spanish Olive. And it's These are all kettle dyed, by the way. So that one is a Falkland. And then lastly, for the fibers, I have Falkland. And this one I'm calling Meadowland, and it's pinks and greens. So those are the fibers that I did. I have a whole bunch of yarn. Um, some of it's variegated, some of it's solid. So this is, first I will show you the yarns that are done in my twisty base, which is a uh, high twist um, yarn that I really like knitting with. Um, so this is, this first one is called 
daisies in the sun, and it's yellows and blues and bare. So you've got white, blue, and yellow. So that's called daisies in the sun. Then we have two. This is my favorite. Well, one of my favorites of all the yarn that I dyed. This is also in the twisty base. It's called tangerine tree. And it's a tangerine orange color and a chartreuse lime greenish color and some bare areas. So you've got white, orange, and green. And I love this. This is variegated and also the daisies in the sun is variegated if you're thinking about getting some for the knit along. And then this one is similar to a fiber I showed last week. Um, this is some yarn that I dyed in the color we called 80s fashion. This will glow under a black light. It's fluorescent dye. And it is pink, yellow, and fuchsia. I mean, pink, no, fuchsia pink, yellow, and orange. Dyed. Love, love, love. That's called 80s fashion. Um, then I have some kettle dyed. This is called tangy. It's like an orangish, peachish color. It's showing up sort of brown. It's not really brown. So that's kettle dyed. This is also kettle dyed. It's called spicy hot. It's the same color I used to dye the fiber in the spicy hot colorway. It's sort of an orangish color. And then I have a manly base, which has um, these little tweedy pieces on it. You can see it's like a black, white, gray little flex and um, uh, Denise from the Knitting Den asked what is NEP um, on her podcast I haven't had a chance to respond to her yet but if you notice on the thing on the label it says 95% superwash 5% NEP these little dot things are the NEP I don't know what NEP stands for nip <laughs> But that's what that is. So I have several of these. Um, I had done um, a few manly colors and I did some girly colors on the manly base. So this is called Opulent Orchid. I love this. And then I have two called Sunshine, which is a yellow, which I think goes great with the pink. And then I have two in Poison which I had last week dyed uh, some fiber in this, which I think goes great with the yellow and the pink and the green. Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm thinking color affection. And then I dyed two in this blue colorway. It's not showing up true here. It's more, it's a deeper blue. It's actually TARDIS blue. If you watch Doctor Who, it's TARDIS blue. I'm calling it perfect blue because it's the perfect blue if you want to knit something TARDIS. So there's two of that again on the manly base. And then lastly, this is called Vampire Bite and it's also on the manly base and it's a reddish color. So there you go. See, that wasn't so painful. So again, the shop update will be Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. The website is sockfunnystudios.etsy.com. Okay, next we have Stash Enhancement. I did place an order. Um, you saw the yarn already. I placed an order with the Loopy U for the um, cowl knit along that I'm doing. And so I had ordered two of them. Here's one that's still in this game. This is Cascade 220 Sport in white. Boring. <laughs> Actually, I think white is very pretty to knit with, though. And it's very easy to see your stitches. And it's just super, super squishy. Uh, the cowl takes one ball. Um, each half of the cowl takes one hanker skein of this. So that's why I ordered two, because I needed my half for myself. So you'll be seeing that again. Um, uh, earlier I had mentioned that two people had referred me to people. Um, so the second person that somebody in their knitting group referred them to me was Laura, who is math for knitters, math and then a number four and then knitters on Ravelry. And she told me that she has a bunch of patterns and she just started um, putting some patterns for sale up on her uh, Ravelry, um, in her Ravelry shop. So I went and checked it out and she said I could pick any of her patterns that I wanted to. She's got a ton of free patterns that honestly 
she should be charging for. They're that awesome. So she's got uh, several shawls that I really, really liked. Um, but the pattern that I picked since 2013 is the year of the sweater for me. The one I picked is um, Mediety, Mediety, Mediety. <laughs> I don't know how you say it, but Medeity means one of two mostly equal parts, Medeity. I'm going to say it's Medeity, Medeity. I don't know. I should probably have looked that up. But anyway, it's a very cute sweater, and it's a, basically a ribbed sweater. I really liked the garter stitch on the um, front panels there. So that is one of the sweaters that I hope to make in 2013. And thank you very much, Laura, for that. Her, uh, she had on her uh, uh, Ravelry um, profile that she's a podcaster. So I did not know that. So I'll have to check her out. Um, but her uh, website is www.journalgazette.net slash crafty living. And I will link to that in the blog and in the um, Ravelry group on this week's thread. I will link to that so that you can get that. So thank you, Laura, for the pattern. And you guys will be seeing that again because I am going to be knitting this sweater. It's adorable. Of course, I won't be knitting it in brown. <laughs> Lime green, orange, turquoise. Um, so that's that. And... That's it for Stash Enhance. Oh, I totally forgot. I want to, want to show you in the Stash Enhancement while I was talking about the white fiber, the white yarn that I got from the Loopy U. They send, um, when you order something, they always send you, of course, your, uh, not invoice, but like a packing slip. So I had to show you what they drew at the bottom. Uh, they always write a little note at the bottom. Well, it's my second order, and they've done it both times, so I assume they always do. But the, I had to show you the picture because it's really cute. It's a sheep trying to get a turkey to play football. <laughs> that cracks me up. Isn't that adorable? Football? Huh? <laughs> okay, I'm easily amused. And they also sent a little thing of soak wool wash which I still haven't tried the last thing of, thing of soap wool wash that somebody gave me, so I might use this to um, when I do Sarah's, uh, to soak Sarah's sweater before I give it to her. Or maybe I'll just give it to her to use. I don't know. Okay, so that's it for Stash Enhancement. Tips and tricks. Uh, this is a tip that I learned a long time ago and sort of fell out of practice, and I've started doing it again, and so I thought I would share it with you. Um, if you haven't heard of, well, there's this website you might or may not have heard of. It's called Fly Lady, and it's flylady.net. And I first started following Fly Lady, I think it was back in 2001, and it's flylady.net. And basically, she teaches you how to take baby steps to get your house under control, your life, your she had, she calls it chaos, C-H-A-O-S, can't have anyone over syndrome because your house is so messy or you're so embarrassed by it. So if you have routines and you follow the routines, then you will, um, your house will always be with it. I think she says within 15 minutes of having guests over. Um, so I have, you know, over all the years, I've tried to keep in practice with what she says. And one of the things that she always says is that you should wear shoes. Now, I know some of you are screaming at me right now that you hate shoes. That's your problem. <laughs> no, I'm just totally joking. Um, but I have found that it is true that the days that I wear shoes, I am more productive. The days that I don't wear shoes, and I do have some white kids that I just wear around the house, but... Um, if I wear shoes, I do more. If I don't put my shoes on, I do less. And I think it's just the whole, uh, I'm just going to be lazy and do blah, 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 blah. But if I put my shoes on, for some reason, that sparks in my mind that I need to get stuff done. I don't know why. It just works. So if you haven't tried it, give it a try. When you get it in the morning, get it dressed in the morning. Fly Lady says you should always get dressed, even if you're working from home. You should always get dressed to your shoes meaning get dressed all the way and put your shoes on. You'll be ready for emergencies. If you drop something, you won't step on glass. There's so many different benefits to wearing shoes. Um, your feet won't be as dried and cracked out. 
dried and cracked, dried out and cracked. That's what I was trying to say. Dried out and cracked as they would be otherwise. So just some things to think about. And I've started doing it again recently and I have remembered that yes, uh, it does help to wear shoes. Um, favorite things. Before I talk about favorite things, I want to mention my Christmas tree here. You may have noticed. That I meant to say this at the beginning. I put this up because, in honor of um, Daniela from the Caffeinated Knitting Podcast, she has her Christmas tree up in her background, and her crazy is that she's decorating it um, for the holidays, and she's putting knitted uh, ornaments on there. I thought that was a really cute idea, so I thought I would go ahead and bust out mine. I have flamingo lights on my Christmas tree. I don't, I don't have any other decorations on there. Generally, we put our tree up the day after Thanksgiving, and um, decorate from that point on. Um, I probably am going to be going to visit Heather WB in northern Florida Thanksgiving weekend sometime. I don't know yet when I'm going up there, so uh, I'm not sure when we'll put our tree up. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that. So that's in honor of Daniela from Caffeinated Knitting. I put my little tree up. And okay, favorite things. My favorite thing. Um, is some ladies that we know that are uh, Catholic missionaries. So like my uh, young, my older daughter Sarah is a Catholic missionary. Um, some other Catholic missionaries taught us this game, and it's not, it's not just their game. Other people, you know, throughout the world play it. And I had never heard of it before, but it's called, um, they call it Peanuts, but evidently a lot of people call it by different names. Basically what the game is, is it's solitaire on steroids. <laughs> You're, you, okay, everybody has their own deck of cards, which is why I'm bringing this up, because my favorite thing, and I don't know where I put them. Did I bring them in? Okay, I thought I brought some playing cards in, but you know what playing cards look like, right? Okay, so I like to collect um, playing cards to di from different places that I go. You know how some people collect shot glasses or matchbook covers and stuff like that? And I like postcards, but I also like playing cards uh, from tourist destinations. So, um, and I have a pair of, uh, I have a set of Coca-Cola playing cards too that I love. Anyway, each person gets their own set of playing cards and each, each deck has to be different because at the end you have to be able to count up how many cards each person played. So you have to have a variety. You can't have two of the same decks in the game. So each person has to have their own deck of cards. So like I have a, a I have, you know, your standard playing cards, but I also have like a pair, a set of Flamingo playing cards. I have playing cards that have flags on the back, different things like that. So, I can, oh, there they are. So these are some that I bought recently. Um, these have, these playing cards have the state of Florida on there and you can see they have flamingos and a dolphin and a manatee, stuff like that. So I just think it's really cool. This is a very touristy thing. I'm such a tourist. So it's a very touristy thing to do. So basically how you play the game and this, these are, are not all the rules, but each pers person is playing um, solitaire individually. But there's also a solitaire game going on in the middle of the table. How it works is you're playing solitaire in the middle of the table. It's not your standard solitaire. And then if you come across an ace, you put it in the middle of the table. So like say I played an ace of hearts. Well then, as people are playing and they come across the game where they have a two of hearts, they can play it in the middle while you're playing your own game of solitaire. So you're watching the middle of the thing while other people are putting aces down, so twos and threes and fours, kings, all that kind of stuff. And when you get to a uh, stack all the way up to king, you move that out of the way. And then, um, so you're playing your own game of solitaire and then you're playing a game of group solitaire in the middle of the table. And it is fast paced and at the end, Okay, when somebody goes out, they're automatically a winner. At the end, you count how many cards you've played in the middle, and the way you do that is you flip them over, and each person has a different deck of cards, so you can tell the cards part. And then um, however many cards you have left in your hand that you haven't been able to play on your own solitaire or the solitaire in the middle, um, you deduct those. So you could conceivably end up with a negative score, which 
is what happens to me because I stink at this game. It's really fun, but I am terrible at it. Uh, my husband Joe is like hyper focused. It's like he puts blinders on. And he's like, I the fate of the world depends on me winning this hand. <laughs> I'm too busy. Like, I just get overwhelmed because it's, and the more people you have, the more fun it is. Um, some of the ladies that we know actually play standing up because they're that intense into the game. I I don't I'm not that competitive so I just play it for fun but they're like super you know they don't even talk or anything it's just really really funny um, so again we call it peanuts you might have a different name if you have played this game before and you know a different name please do let me know uh, what your favorite thing is so that my favorite thing this week is the game peanuts and playing cards I love them <laughs> okay um. That's it for favorite things. What I am watching and reading, I've been really trying to catch up on podcasts. It seems like it's a never-ending battle. I haven't been listening to any audio podcasts, I think, in two weeks, so I really need to uh, listen to those. I haven't really had time. Um, it's weird because Rachel's home again now, and places I would normally go by myself before, like the grocery store, and I would listen to podcasts, now she goes with me. So I don't really listen to a podcast while she's with me. She ruins everything. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to catch up on podcasts. Rachel and I did watch the Serenity movie that is the um, sequel to the Firefly TV show, and we had not seen it. Uh, it was really violent, but the storyline was really good. Um, and it's a good thing we watched what we did, because then on the Sci-Fi channel, they had a 10-year reunion, and there were some spoilers that they gave out that had we not watched the Serenity movie just a couple of days before, it would have ruined the movie for us. Well, not ruined it, but you know what I mean. So it was a good thing that we watched those two things in the order that we did. And um, things I want to see, I want to see the new James Bond movie that just came out. And I also want to see the new Abraham Lincoln movie. I will see the Abraham Lincoln movie. I don't go to the movie theater that often because, one, I'm a cheapskate. Um, so... Uh, but I will see the Abraham Lincoln movie in theaters because he is my favorite president. I know he wasn't perfect, and I know, you know, everybody has their faults, but I can really relate to him a lot. Um, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people know that he suffered from depression. And despite that, look at all the fabulous things that he did. And again, I know he wasn't perfect. Nobody is. Um, but I definitely am going to go see the Abraham Lincoln movie. I do want to see the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer movie, but I'll wait till that comes out on video before I see that. Um, I think that's about it. I am so glad that you joined me, and I hope that you will come back and join me again. And I hope you have a great week. Don't forget the shop update is Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And keep on crafting. Bye.